Hey everyone, Greta here. So a few days ago, I posted a video on my YouTube channel and I got this really, really good comment and I thought I should share. Um, so the comment is actually a question. Um, it asked, if you want to be good in yoga, do you have to go to the gym and like lift some weights to build more muscles? And I thought that's such a good question and actually I've been asked before so I thought it would be good to just talk about it. Um, so the first part of the question, you know, in order to be good in yoga, so I just wanna address that. Um, there's no such thing as being good or bad in yoga. You see, yoga is not like other like competitive sports or um, activities or performing arts that you can critique or you can judge whether someone is doing it good or someone is doing it not as good. Okay. Um, it's not like you know, a ballet where there's like specific or really special um, guidelines on how to do something. For yoga, there isn't. So it is impossible to judge whether or not someone is good. Going back to yoga, it's it's just the shapes that we're seeing. Um, because, you know, in social media, all we could see is either a video or, or a snapshot of a yoga pose. So it's very easy to just, based on that shape, based on that video, and just say that whether or not that person is good. However, the shapes we call asana is just the gateway of something a lot deeper. So when you're practicing yoga, doing those shapes, it just helps you to get more deeper in your concentration level and also be more cautious and mindful. So that is why we do a lot of these shapes to either prepare our body if our body's not ready to settle because if the body's not ready to be settling or to become still, then the mind will just keep running around. It's very hard to just calm down and sit and concentrate if the body is doesn't feel comfortable. So that's why we do a lot of these shapes to prepare the body if the body is not yet ready. And if the body is ready, then it trains the mind. So if we take the analogy of um, you know going to the subway, taking the subway, the yoga shapes, the asanas, is the gate. Okay. Before that, you have to buy the ticket. So there's other two layers um, in front of the gate and in front of the asanas. But then after you pass the gate, then you do the journey. Okay, so the asana is the gate. Uh, it leads you to other layers, you know, to the breath, to the mind, you know, withdrawing of the senses, concentration, concentrating a little bit more and all that. So that is why you cannot say someone is good at yoga or someone's bad in yoga. They're either practicing yoga or they're not practicing yoga. So anyways, back to the physical level. So um, I mean, with all that yoga talk, we still have to address it physically because there is always that physical layer, all these shapes that do require, you know, some shapes do require more physical strength physical mobility in order to be able to get into them. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to say, uh, let's not talk about that at all. We need to talk about it. Okay. Uh, so if you are struggling in a certain shape, then it's, it might not just be the muscles that you have to build more strength in or more, build more mass or build more muscles. There are a lot of more elements. So is it that you're using the correct muscles? You know, let's say in a crow pose, you know, are you using, you know, are you spreading the upper back or are you just jamming or using your upper traps? You know, the top neck shoulder area and just, you know, jamming everything there and hoping that you would be able to lift up, right? So if you're not using the correct muscles or the necessary muscles, then it's not about the muscle building more muscles. You, you're not just using the necessary muscles to to get into the shape, right? And what about 
the breath. Are you holding the breath when you're when you're entering the shape, or you're holding the breath when you are in the shape? And breath is super important. So if you're not breathing correctly, or if you're not breathing at all, then that would also affect, you know, how you are when you're entering the pose, or how you are when you are actually in the shape. Okay. And also, is it a technical issue? Again, let's just take crow pose for example. You know, are you shifting forward enough for the lower body to become light to float up? You know, are you just using your you know, arms to push and just kind of hop or, or lean or you know, sending messages to the universe, hoping that the universe would help you to lift the, the legs up. You know, is, it, is that a technical element to your struggle? Okay. Or is it mental blockage? It could very well be the, the mind, the brain is not allowing you to do it because maybe the brain doesn't feel as safe. Again, take crow pose for example. A lot of people are struggling in crowd not because they are not strong enough or not because they are they're holding their breath. It's simply because the mind refused the body to shift forward because the mind or the brain is worried that the body might get injured if shifting too far forward with face plant. So that could be a mental blockage that blocking you. So that's why the yoga that you're doing is not quote unquote good. Or is it that your foundation is not solid enough? Are you doing things that the body's not yet ready for? Maybe, maybe you don't have to go to the gym. Maybe all you need is to spend more time working on the basics, the foundation, and that might get you to where you want to be. If however, you do decide that you need to go to the gym, I'm not judging anybody because like I don't know anybody's body except for mine. So there might be some people that think that or believe that going to the gym would be helpful, which I mean, um, I won't disagree. Make sure that you know what you're working on, okay? Or get a personal trainer who knows how to help you. That's very important rather than just, you know, working on building like generally more muscle strength, but not necessarily the muscles that you need in order to do what you want to do. Now, um, coming back to myself, because I've been asked quite a lot of times, um, people t- have asked me, you know, other than yoga, is there any other things that I do? Do I go to the gym? Do I lift weights? Do I run? Do I do other kinds of sports or activities or exercises? Um, my answer is no. Uh, I just do yoga. Um, I don't lift weights because I always joke that because I do a lot of handstands, right? So I'm like, why don't I, why do I have to lift weights when I just lift myself up? So that's kind of like a little weak joke. Um, I don't do it. I just do yoga. Yoga is that all I do. Okay. Um, but I do, however, do some rehab work uh, in my shoulder stabilizing muscles because I have scoliosis. So um, the left side of me, the back side, is weaker than my right side. So in order to balance the two sides, I need to do specific drills and exercises to build more, to make my left back muscles stronger, just to balance out the right side. So yeah, that is it. So that is the, the, the extra work that I do. Okay. Um, I call that more like a rehab work, just to make my body feel even and so that's it so yeah and i could go on and on but i thought um this little short clip is enough to maybe get you thinking you know what is it in yoga that you want to do you know, are you more into the shapes the physical shapes which is not a bad thing like i'm not you know shaming anyone for for chasing after those like really cool looking shapes because I do find them very fascinating. But then I also want you to know that that is more like the entrance. So if you're willing to, or maybe try to explore a little bit deeper, maybe tap into your mind, how you are thinking, what are you thinking when you are in those shapes and just to understand yourself a little bit more. All right. So that's it. So Take it easy.